The following is a presentation of TFNN. Good morning, markets kick off with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you got markets to the positive side. Check out the run the SP is on right now. You're talking about almost 35 points from where we were. 8 30 a.m. this morning. We get the PCE. You're up by about 0.4%, 2.8% on the year. When you're going to take a look at those numbers, you take a look at the core. We're up by 0.4%, um, and you're up by 2.8% on the year. The market, they're liking the numbers, folks. We're higher. You're up by 17 points. We'll get into those numbers in a moment, but you got the S&Ps up by about 30 of a percent. NASDAQ 100, you see the acceleration. You were trading at 17,866. We're up about 150 points off that price level right now, back above 18,000. Dow, 39,094. You're up by 100 points, quarter percent to the positive. And how about the Russell? Up by 1.7%. The Russell near 2,080. Crude, hanging tough. We were at 79.62 yesterday. Right now, you're trading at 78.59, basically flat on the session. We have some action in yields. We have some action in currencies. You're going to have some action in gold. How about it? Gold up $15 to 2057 You're up 20 bucks from where you were just about an hour and a half ago. That, a reflection of some of what we're have, having happen in yields, of course. You have higher price and lower yield coming at you in the tenure. You jump over to the tenure right now, you're talking about four and a quarter percent. We're at about 4.3% yesterday. So you get a slight pullback in yields. When you get lower yields, that is going to add weakness to the dollar. And the whole relationship, very easy to keep track of, right? If America is giving out 3% yields on its debt versus 4% yield on its debt or 4.25%, which is what the 10 years is at right now, if the yields go up, there's going to be more demand for those yields. You'll have to buy the dollars. If the yields go down... There'll be less demand for those yields, therefore creating less demand for the dollar, creating weakness. This morning, that's what we have happening, the latter. Yields are going down. There is dollar weakness. We're back below 104. And anytime you get dollar weakness, when you price commodities in a weaker dollar, they're going to be more expensive. And there's your correlation. As you get gold spiking up to 2057 this morning, we jump over to the VIX as the market pops higher. Volatility sucked out of this market to a certain degree. VIX back to about 13.52. Okay, getting back into those numbers. I gave you it at first, but let's go over it. The actual number that we're talking about here. So the headline, PCE, 0.3% on the month, right in line. Core, 0.4%, right in line on a monthly basis. The headline year-over-year -year number is 2.4%. If you take out food and energy, the headline number is at 2.8%. Now, you had some other numbers in there, too. One of the numbers they were talking about on Bloomberg this morning as they announced it, uh, income going up 1%. But dividends, a huge component of that. It's amazing how much we're all learning because these numbers are so important. I mean, for decades, folks, these numbers, yes, they were important. But for decades, you just had these numbers come and go because we were at a period of time that we had not dealt with generational inflation for some time. And now we need to understand exactly what's going on. You have income rising a bit, but where does that income come from? It comes from dividends, which is absolutely remarkable that that is such a contribution to income, as it's stated. Apologize for that. Somehow the mic cut out there. Thank you to my producer. And you have the S&Ps down about, uh, excuse me, about 23 points off the highs that we made February 23rd. 
All right, we jump around to some of the Magnificent Seven. You got Amazon shares. They were lower, man. You're going to be a little bit higher, 172.84 for Amazon shares right now. You jump over to Apple shares, trading at 181.35, basically flat on the session. Microsoft shares catch a bid up by about $2. Google shares this morning basically flat as well. Meta up about $4. You jump over to Tesla shares, up about 2 bucks this morning. You jump over to Netflix shares. There you go. There's a pop to the tune of about 10 bucks for Netflix shares at 6.06. All right, so these are the headlines you're going to see, just jumping around. 2.8% from a year ago and 0.4% when you take out on a monthly basis. And it is pretty remarkable that on a monthly basis, the most recent 30 days were up 0.4%. Now, this number could be revised, okay? There are revisions, so it was a slight revision to the previous number. But over a period of 30 days... It's up 0.4%. And think about the benchmark that you're going against 30 days prior, right? Higher prices across the board, exponential growth in inflation from 30 days ago, and still on a monthly basis, we're going up 0.4%. These numbers, I wonder how often, and maybe somebody in the den has some great historical data, right? Over those last 20 years, and I'm ballparking, you know, like we didn't deal with it since really the 80s almost, right? The 90s, 2000s. 2010 decade, we didn't deal with generational inflation, man. And over that time, how often were you getting core, okay, core numbers on a monthly basis that were approaching half a percent? 0.4, still some lofty numbers, man. Yeah, personal income. There's, you're going to see that one, but you're going to see people dig into it too. Well above the forecast for 0.3%. But would they bid something? I think dividends were up like 4.1%, something like that. Dividend income contributing to that 1% number, well above the 0.3%. Spending decreased. The estimate was for a 0.2% gain, but they were already looking for a slowdown. That's versus 0.7% the month prior. So they were still looking for a 0.2%, but spending decreases. Remember that income number? Dividend income, a big component of that versus actual income that people are going to be spending. Not sure you're spending dividend income in the same way that you're spending income. Nonetheless, the markets are higher. We got yields lower. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back with our man, Kevin Hinks from the Schwab Network. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. 
an amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Welcome back, folks. We got S&P futures up by 16 points right now. You're trading up about three tenths percent, 5,096 to talk about some of the action this morning. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks. 12 noon Eastern time, fast market from the Schwab Network right here on Tiger TV. Your host, Kevin Hanks, Tom White, the outstanding team of the Schwab Network. They break it down and let's get into it. Uh, Kevin Hanks, we got the numbers, almost uh, what we expected, and the market seems to like it as we're higher, near 5,100. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, a big snapback rally in all the futures, really based on a number that was pretty much in line with expectations. So maybe... The market was looking for a hotter number like we've gotten out of the other three inflationary numbers. And since they didn't get it, even though personal income was up a full 1%, that was a big beat on the numbers. But the rest, the year-over-year -year PCE index comes in 2.4%. That's down two-tenths. And the year-over-year -year core comes in 2.8%. That's in line with expectations, but down a tenth. Here's the numbers within the numbers, Tommy. Uh, goods were down 0.2%. Services, up 06 Food, up 05 But here's the number that might be concerning, Tommy. Energy, down 1.4%. Now, we know if you're watching the markets on a daily basis, you've got crude oil railing up to close to $79 a barrel. How is energy down 1.4%? Maybe this number might be a little stale. Here, so that might concern the market. But besides that, big relief rally, Tommy. The numbers in the numbers. I like it. You always break down beyond that headline because, man, it's interesting and you make a great point. Crude, uh, just yesterday, right? Quite the rally, even yesterday, quite the rally from Monday's low. I got 75.84 on my Thinkorswim platform uh, just on early, early Monday futures action. We almost hit 80 as of yesterday. Uh, it is remarkable. What do you think, Kevin, just about? I was thinking about this morning because the core number. 0.4% on a monthly basis. And it's pretty interesting that we're still dealing, and I know that number is particularly volatile, of course, when you go into a 30-day section of pricing. But it is remarkable that we're talking about 0.4%, and with that number, it's all about expectations, but you actually see yields pull back a little bit. Because we're now benchmarking, if you think about, we're benchmarking on a month-over-month -month basis versus like what prices were 30 days ago. And that number continues to rise, of course, as inflation. But what do you think about that number, 0.4 percent? Does that cause you any any worry, even though it's within pretty much the expectation on the dot? Yeah, all the, uh, the, the PCE numbers, both month-over-month -month numbers were higher than a month ago, right? So if you're worried about inflation, I mean, a 0.4 on a core PCE, that's a strong number. That's a number that should concern the market month-over-month, -month, especially – Tommy, when you're looking at a headline number that is dominated by energy. So, yeah, I think that's concerning. The fact that core PCE is 2.8, and actually that core PCE month over month, it really came in like 0.42 if you look on the tables of the, uh, of, of the release. So, yeah, it's – I mean, you're right. that That's the number, that month over month core PCE that really jumped out at you is, wow, that's not strong. That's hot. I just I appreciate the opinion. And, you know, the Fed's rate is still pushing almost 5.5 percent. So if you multiply even 0.4 times 12, you're talking about 4.8. The Fed might have some room to go to the downside in terms of cutting in with that number. But uh, I just wanted to make sure I was in the ballpark, man, because I look at those numbers. And I say, you know, and it is remarkable, right, that that number is based off where we were 30 days ago. And man, think about where prices have gone over the last year, two years, three years. And even 
benchmarking versus where we were that recently. Prices are still rising, like you said, um, actually increasing at the rate. With that in mind, man, we got some equities moving as well. What do you guys have coming up on Fast Market at 12 today, Kevin? Fun show for you today based on a lot of earnings, Tommy. Zscaler, the uh, cybersecurity company, we'll cover them in the first segment. Uh, like Folio will cover Carvana, right? That, that's been a really interesting, fun trader. And then we'll look at Dell Computer uh, in, in the final segment. M Michael Dell's company that was public, was private, now it's public again. And we'll trade that in the final segment. So three good names today. And look at those are three great names, man. I was jumping through them as you went through Zscaler. Uh, Carvana, of course, and then Dell, and quite a chart on Dell, man. Just pull it up on the Thinkorswim platform on a weekly basis, but even just going back almost a year, man, remarkable, from 36 to 93. And it's amazing, Kevin, because I think myself, Dell, I'm trying to think what years. I mean, I'm thinking like 2005, maybe. I remember really looking for some sweet Dell laptops or something like that. You could really customize those things, and here we are almost 20 years later, and we're still talking about that stock. Uh, Kevin, I appreciate the time. The mornings don't get much busier than this one, and we look forward to the program Fast Market at 12 o'clock today, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. Folks, check it out. You heard it. They're talking three great stocks, and I'm sure they're going to be talking about the numbers within the numbers as well. Always appreciate, Kevin, breaking down those numbers. Uh, and yeah, you know, it, it food and energy gets taken out of the core aspect of things, which the Fed keeps their eye on. But it doesn't get taken out of prices. And if you start getting those rises on a headline basis and you have crude pushing 79 to 80 dollars, OK, and you back this chart up on a weekly basis, you can see that we are approaching levels that you only got above from a period of August to basically the beginning of November last year. You talk about getting helped out at a time when we're dealing with generational inflation and somehow we have a war breaking out in the Middle East. And we are fortunate enough to have crude basically stuck below $80. And maybe that's not going to be the case as we go forward, man. With crude trading at 78.59 right now, pushing that upper boundary. That's the weekly basis. You put this back on a daily. I mean, that's a period of higher highs and higher lows when you're coming up to. And then just yesterday, we make that high of 79.62. Today, we're at 78.60. But this morning... It's going to be about inflation, and we're trading right now just below 5,100. You touch 5,100 on the dot, 5,096 right now on the S&Ps. You're up by 15, NASDAQ up by about 102. We'll see where we go from there on the open. You jump back to some of the yields. The 10-year, we get higher price and lower yield. All the markets uh, in the last just 10, 15 minutes or so taking a little bit of a pause before the opening bell. We keep our eye on the dollar as we pull back to 103.79. Take a look at a little bit of a longer term chart on the dollar. You run up to lofty prices when the market was on fire. The Fed begins there. And look at how it gets ahead of it, right? September, the dollar peaks. The market was expecting that hikes were going to come. I have to recalibrate my vein. And you sink all the way to, what is that? No, excuse me. The, yeah, look at the run up in 2022. Absolutely remarkable. Hold on. Let me recalibrate this. Yeah, I have to. OK, so the dollar index. Accelerates higher as the Fed hikes. Higher yield drives demand for the dollar. And we peak out at 115 now. You had Europe then begin hiking. Okay, so it's not just about our policy. Then you had higher rates in Europe that were competing to a certain degree as we were the first one to that party. Nonetheless, we have been sitting in this range since November of 2022. Okay, you're talking about what? 15, 16 months. We've been chopping around between 100 and 105. And I think we're nearing the range that, you know, if we're only talking about the cuts begin in June, maybe they can begin in July, maybe we get three, maybe we get four. Nonetheless, I think they're coming. Keep your eye on that month over month basis. We'll see how this market reacts on the open. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back in three minutes for the opening bell. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. 
Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open at a nice even round number, 5,100 on the dot right now. s and is up 19 points, and we did come into that number in the negative. So you're up 19 on the session, but you're up 35 points from where we were trading coming into that 8.30 a.m. PCE number. NASDAQ 100, you catch a bit as well. We're up by three quarters percent, trading at 18,050. Dow up by 57 points. You actually get a little bit of a dip lower to 39,038 on the open, still up by 50 or one tenth percent in the positive. And you jump over the Russell, give it back a little bit on the open as well, still up by 28 points or 1.3 percent. We'll see where the day goes. Uh, as we know, the first move is not always the move that carries, whether it's on Fed Day, whether it's on some of these CPI numbers. But as Kevin put it, seems like a little bit of fear taken out of this market, a little, a little bit of an exhale as they come in in line and the market takes a sigh of relief and we trade a little bit higher and volatility gets sucked out of this market. We keep our eye on yields. The 10-year right now. Up two ticks, 110.13, holding on to basically that spike we got at about 8.30. You got a 10-year yield of about 4.25%, just above that yield right now, 4.25%. Five, six to be exact and you jump over to the dollar 103.81 we keep our eye on gold spikes up to 2056 you take a look at that gold contract put it back even on a daily 
I mean, the natural highs we've been pushing here is just about 2100. You got that spike to 2152. I remember that, man, December 4th. I think it was a Sunday night before the market was even open. So I remember my dad in particular saying, you know, I don't like that. That's that's when it spikes like that, it gives it up. It does it all without even being in normal market hours, not indicative of strength. It trades from 2152 down to the lower boundary of 2000. You touch that area towards the end of January. You touch $2,000 on February 14th, and we're rising up by $15 right now on that gold contract. All right, let's jump around to some of the individual equities that are trading higher. Excuse me, that are trading with volatility on their numbers. But Best Buy is trading higher. You jump over to the 15-minute. There's your acceleration, Best Buy. Pulling over the headline for them. They top uh, holiday quarter estimates, but soft full-year guidance. Looks like that's uh, not bringing them down. Nonetheless, for the fiscal year, they're looking for 41.3 to 42.6 billion. That's going to be a drop from the guidance they most recently gave of 43.45. Comp sales are going to be flat to a 3% decline. One, ch one challenge um, is a week shorter. Yeah, an extra week in the past fiscal year lifted revenue by $735 million and boosted diluting earnings per share by $0.30. Cents. It's remarkable, man. I mean, imagine, they're, they're, they're only taking in $41 billion, and they got, I mean, it's basically 152nd of that, of that number, $735 million bucks for that extra week, so they're going to miss out on that this coming week. They knew that the last time they gave guidance, though, so still they got some issues going on nonetheless. Best Buy shares, they are trading a little bit higher, and they're in the numbers, 272 versus 252. Revenue, a slight beat at 14.65, but as I mentioned, for the fiscal year, they got a little bit down. Yeah, a quarter better than feared. In the three-month period ended February 3rd, net income fell by 7% to $460 million, $212 a share. Comp sales declined 4.8% during the quarter. Shoppers bought fewer appliances, mobile phones, tablets, and home theater setups. You know what's interesting is I think TVs when I think Best Buy, right? And if anybody in the den can help me out, just even anecdotal experiences. I was in there recently, and... You know, they have fridges, they have appliances, right? They have washer dryers. But I found myself thinking, how do they compete with Home Depot, man? Because how does Lowe's even compete with Home Depot, right? Because it's it's economies of scale. The bigger you are, it's the, Wal the Walmart phenomenon. To a certain degree, now it's probably the Amazon phenomenon to the same degree as well. It used to be the Sears Robux phenomenon. If you have the biggest economies of scale, I mean, Walmart... I don't know their deals right now, but you know there's a tremendous amount of pressure. If you want to be a seller in Walmart, okay, you got a pro you have a product, you want to sell that product in Walmart. Yeah, of course, it's anti-competitive, okay, they, but they have enough competitors that they're not a monopoly. They will say we're not going to sell your product in our in our stores unless you give us the best deal that you're going to give to anybody else, okay? We're not going to sell your toy, your food item, whatever it is, okay, unless you're selling it to us at a price level that is probably cheaper or at least as cheap, right, as anybody else. And the more product you buy, the more negotiating power you have to make that type of a deal. And, you know, yes, once you reach a certain level, you're, you're approaching levels that have reached mass economies of scale and you can demand those types of savings, right? But Best Buy, it's got to be pretty difficult to compete. Maybe they don't have the selection when you're talking about appliances with the companies because when I think appliances, man, I think Lowe's and I think Home Depot. Straight up, and they get some pretty good deals. The one thing that you got to watch out for is they're all pushing sales 24 uh, hours a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year. All of them, man. If you're buying appliances, they got a sale that's like now is the day you got to do it, and you got to buy every appliance in your kitchen to maximize your savings. The sale ends at midnight, and they got sales for pretty much many different factors throughout the the holiday season. So keep that one, um, as in you know they got. Whether it's the summer, right? They got July 4th. They got, it keeps going down the line. But how is Best Buy going to compete with those companies when those, you know, you're talking about TVs, you're talking about stuff like that, electronics. I was in there looking at Nintendo Switches recently. Um, yes, that makes sense. But appliances, I don't know. It just doesn't quite go there in my brain. Let's see. Okay, so Best Buy is higher. On the flip side of that, if you're in the weight loss industry, 
And you got a company and Oprah's on your board. The last thing you want is her taking her money, leaving, selling those shares, giving them away, whatever she does, and leaving the board. And that is what happens. Now, you get a little bit of a bid. Check that out, right? Yeah, more than a little bit of a bid. But uh, that's the story with Weight Watchers, man. Take a look at this chart, man. Whew. Talk about a dead cat rally in December, man. Whew. So Weight Watchers is out with their numbers, but one of the things you're talking about there is that Oprah, let me pull this up, is leaving the board and giving away all her stock at a critical weight loss moment. And, you know, to take a look at this equity, I remember when she got into this, can't believe it was 2015. Yeah, because look at this, look at this. Oh man, look at this. Absolutely remarkable, man. Because at first, do you remember when this happened, man? So she became a board member in 2015, okay? Man, you got to sell to make money in the market, folks, okay? You got to sell. Look at this run up to 105, and you're sitting at three bucks for Weight Watchers, okay? Uh, she joined the company, acquired a significant stake, a board member in 2015, leaving that position in May. Um, and yeah, the stock is lower. They've paired some of those losses. And yeah, they have a threat to their model in terms of everybody's going to want prescription meds if that's the holy grail going on right now. But boy, you talk about a run up. So you have the CEO was named to the inaugural CNBC changemakers list on Wednesday. More power to them. We'll, we'll take a look at this, man. Look at that run up in 2018 to 105. Markets in positive. Stay tuned, folks. We'll look at some other equities. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up by 22 points. Hanging tough, trading higher, man. We're making session highs at 5,103. You're up by about half a percent. You are bumping into the area that we opened near Monday. You made a high early Monday at 915 pre-market of 5,103, exactly where we just traded to. And then you ticked higher at about 10 o'clock to a high of 5,102.75, basically right where we're at right now. So you're right where we were intraday Monday to kick off the trading week. You drift lower to 5,060 maybe 5,065 coming into that release. And then you just get it all back in the span of a few minutes. So we're just back to where we were, the highs of Thursday, your chop area on Friday, where the market opened on Monday, and we'll see if we can sustain from there. You take a look at the NASDAQ 100, you can see pretty, pretty exact same scenario, right? You're right where we were near the open on Monday. That's where we chopped around to Thursday's high, just below the highs in terms of what you made on Friday morning at 18,144 in the markets. Keeping our eye on Weight Watchers, down by 16%, off by 3.2%, and this one's an interesting one. So we were talking about this story earlier in the week, I think it was, right? Talking about this company, if you're watching the program, Figure AI. So this is the Bezos, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Amazon-funded um, AI robot humanoid company. It's quite an introduction, right? Now, what the kicker of this is, and let me see if I can find Figure AI... Watch this. They were they were looking for a valuation, folks, of 1.9 billion. I think it was like 30 days to 60 days ago. Okay. And then the story I read on Bloomberg. Here we go. Oh, that's not it. Forgive me. Yeah, here we go. So this was six days ago. So maybe it was last week. <laughs> Look at this one. So they come in at 2.6 billion, all right? The kicker is that's 30% above what this article referenced just last week. Now, yeah, that was six days ago. So what was it? It was the beginning of the week I read this, okay? They're raising 675 million in a funding round that carries a pre-money valuation at 2 billion. Nope, nope. They said, we're not gonna take that. We're gonna take uh, 2.6 billion dollars is the number that that came in with. You got Bezos, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Amazon. Now, what's amazing here, right, is when you go back, is it's bigger than that. Because look at the list that they list down here in terms of who's who that gets some action in funding here, okay? Intel's in there with 25 million. LG, 8.5. Samsung, 5 million. Everybody wants a piece, okay? Uh, OpenAI is in there. Investing $5 million, OpenAI. Now, these numbers are subject to change, okay? This this article had it referenced at $2 billion, okay? But you can see the remarkable way. I was talking to my dad about this. Silicon Valley, right? Deals getting done. It's who you know. You can see how this company was started in 2022. We're barely into 2024, okay? They build humanoid AI robots. Of course, that's like the ultimate growth, you know, trifecta of verbiage that you can put into your prospectus as you're raising money right now. Bezos committed 100 million, Microsoft's investing 95, Nvidia and Amazon are putting in 50 each, so that's a big chunk of it. But when it comes to more money than that, instead of going to public markets, and why would you ever go to public markets if the article was written a week ago and you said maybe we were at 2 billion and now we're at 2.6? That's a 30% acceleration of the value in seven days. They go to market when all of those easy gains have, have been accumulated. And, and now when you see, it's just remarkable when you see companies of vast, vast size contributing such small sums like OpenAI for $5 million, Arc Venture Fund. 2.5 million. That's nothing for Kathy Wood. Okay, these are nothing numbers for a lot of these companies. Yet they dabble everywhere. They pr dominate the market, and um, and it's a who's you know type of deal. But how about that, right? We were talking about this article last week, probably or maybe Monday, and then it comes in at 2.6 billion is the number. Yeah, humanoid robots that can perform dangerous and undesirable jobs. 
Bezos has some use for them in, in, in his warehouses, I imagine. Yeah. Everyday tasks autonomously. I mean, it's the remarkable thing is that it's a matter of when, not if, all this is going to happen. Yeah. Amazon backed agility robots plans to – agility robots, okay, robotics plans to open a factory that can produce 10,000 of its bipedal digit robots per year. 10,000. Sci-fi, man. It's coming at you. The humanoid robot market is going to reach $38 billion in the next 11 years. And it's amazing. Now, you know, with Tommy, Tommy just turned three. My brain – has difficulty comprehending what the world would ever look like when he's my age 40 years from right now, when you're going to have a $40 billion humanoid robot market in the next 10 to 11 years, right? We're at the early curve where there's loads of interest in humanoids. And I think, I mean, everybody's going to have, what was, what was the name of the maid on the Jetsons? Somebody have that for me in the den? Come on. I know we got some Jetsons fans uh, in the den, a, a cult classic of, of a back a day. Rosie, there we go, Duncan, Steve. Rosie, that's it, perfect. Uh, everyone's gonna have their Rosie in the house, man. It's happening, pretty remarkable. s and is hanging up by 20 points right now. We check in on some of those companies, the high flyers. Check out Amazon, man, up by eight tenths percent. Amazon's in the Dow now, remember that as well. So you're gonna get a contribution there. Amazon up by about eight tenths percent. We jump over to Apple shares. They're basically flat at 181.56. Jump over to Microsoft shares, up about two tenths percent. Speaking of Tesla, up about half a percent right now. We check back in on yields as this market digests. Pretty interesting. We're getting no movement right now. We're almost 20 minutes into the open, and the S and P's have barely budged. As you get that relief rally pre-market, we gained back everything we had this week in terms of the pullback, but we still suck at that nice round number of 5102. And the market is priced for a lot of optimism, especially when it comes to the Fed as well. Price continues to rise, so it's continuing here. We're getting the 10-year drifting positive, even on a one-minute basis. Look at this run we're getting, man. We just popped at 942. We're up five ticks from where we were the last seven minutes, man, as yields continuing to drop right now. And you have you get yields continuing to drop. We're now below 4.24%. And what's that going to do? That's going to bring some weakness into the dollar. We're now below 103.80. Those are one-minute bars yet again. You can see, okay? Look how clear it is. I know many of you know it, but for those that don't, look how important it is to keep your eye on yields, the dollar, especially if you're trading gold, commodities, but the market as well, okay? You're getting this second acceleration right now. There's the 942 bar in the yields. Immediately, that correlates to the bar you get in the dollar. We jump over the 942 bar in the dollar. There's your rally to lower price, higher yield. Uh, excuse me. Well, it is. To, uh, we'll do that again. The 10-year goes to higher price, okay, lower yield. And when you get lower yield, you're going to see a dollar pullback because there's less reason to demand dollars if the yield is going to be lower. And then we see if gold is correlating as well, and it is. And there's your 942 bar in gold. Look at that. Gold trades up almost $2.50 for that one minute. And yeah, it's based off yields, it's based off dollar, they're all related, they're all correlated in the market. Sitting at 5,100 right now with a 10-year yield just below four and a quarter percent. Stay tuned, folks, one more segment. Don't go away, we'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We put things back on a 15-minute chart. We got the S&Ps pretty much hanging right just above where we were on the open. We're trading up by 21 points, 4 tenths percent in the positive. NASDAQ 100, we're up by about 8 tenths percent, 143 points. We'll call it to the positive side, 18,058. Dow lagging a bit, only up by 1 tenth percent right now, and that's even with Amazon. Um, and, of course, you have multiple companies in there, but Amazon catching a bid, man. Check it out. Up by a full percent to 174.88. Russell. Up by 1.4 percent we jump over to apple shares basically flat microsoft up by about half a percent weight watchers this morning down about 20 percent on their numbers best buy up by 5.3 percent right there and we jump over to some of the streamers warner brothers discovery up by 1.5 percent maybe some of that having to do with maybe dune potentially taking in 80 million dollars or potentially that number dune part two due out in theaters tomorrow they might break the drought We'll see. So Warner Brothers is pushing maybe you want to under promise and over deliver, right? So far in 2024, no film has generated more than 100 million. I chuckle because, man, we are so far off from what things months were in terms of Disney knocking out like nine separate billion dollar movies over the course of a 12 month period. The whole entire take right now is at box office of 866 million. And we're two months into the year, man. I mean, remember, we have movies sometimes that crush 800 million over the first, what, three, four weeks of their releases sometimes in terms of billion dollar movies, potentially. I don't know if they do it that quickly. But nonetheless, we'll see what happens when you get some avatars, you get a couple Star Wars, a couple years down the line, maybe a big Marvel movie that everybody can enjoy. Nonetheless, they're looking for potentially 80 million. Now, Warner Brothers is pushing 65 million. Where are we? It's in here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, look at there it was. Last last year you had two hundred and sixty three million in the Avatar The Way of the Water, which had hit in December the previous year, and that's just what you got in the quarter. Two thousand two had Spider Man. Yeah, they get some tough go around. Nonetheless, Warner Brothers, you're catching a bit up by one point five percent after hitting eight twenty five less than a week ago on their tough earnings go around. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got a man Basil Chapman. He's up next. Don't miss the Tiger Technicians Hour with Basil. Stay tuned, folks. Steve Rhodes is back today. His internet's working. Larry, my dad as well.